I've moved over onto the ES, which is the uh, E-mini index futures contract for the S&P 500. Uh, the US markets are just getting underway. Um, and uh, as you can see, I'm on a 10 minute time frame here. We're trading on Globex. The cash markets are not open yet. So this is electronic contract only. And again, it's a, it's a nice example of, uh, first of all, the relationship between the volume point of control and the, the volume associated with it. You can see how significant it is here. It's a huge amount of volume. And the reason for that is because this market has been in congestion for a long time. This is, um, you know, this is 10, 12 hours or so of congestion, not really going anywhere. Then we start to get the move away. And as we break away from this region, volume is falling away nicely for us. And what's interesting to note is you see this low volume here on the, on the volume point of control histogram. We've moved through there pretty swiftly. And that's what you expect to see because if there's very little volume on the profile, then you expect to see price action move through pretty swiftly. We've had some congestion building here. We've had the volume building alongside it. And we're now pushing up again into a low volume region on this particular time frame on the 10 minute. And if, 10 minute, if this is your trading window, if this is your, your primary focus is on this particular time frame, you would of course have a faster time frame below and a slower time frame above. We'll flick up onto 15 and see what's going on there just to get a different perspective. But again, it, it gives you so much information and it's all about anticipation of what's going to happen next, whether, the, whether you're breaking away from the volume point of control, in which case you're a breakaway trader and you'd be looking at, you'd have the volume associated down here, the linear relationship between volume and price, you'd be looking at that from a volume price analysis methodology, uh, or whether the, you are actually coming up to a volume point of control uh, level at which you expect and anticipate uh, congestion or possibly a reversal. So let's just flick this up to, let's go to a different time frame. Let's go up to up to 15, see where we are. Volume point of control here is a much lower level. Uh, the volume here was more significant than in this region. So this was obviously in congestion much longer for this period than this period was. But again, we're moving up into a low volume region. So from a trading perspective, you know, this is excellent news. It means that uh, there's very little in the way of volume to acts as resistance to to hinder progress right now obviously there are many other factors you've got fundamental data you've got uh, crossovers from one session to another you've got cash markets opening up you've got all sorts of other factors to consider but what the volume point of control gives you is that all important information once you're in the trade and and from a, a resistance and support perspective what is likely to happen next let's just go up let's step up to the, the 30 minute Let's just see what that looks like. Okay, click that off there. Pretty similar picture. Very heavy concentration of volume, less so here. You see how rapidly it moved both the downside and the upside through this region here. This was a low volume region comparatively, at any rate, with this volume here. So it moved through pretty swiftly, both on the downside and on the upside. Struggling at this level because we had uh, you know a lot of volume sitting here. But then as the volume falls away, Look how rapidly the, the price action manages to break through this region and up into the low volume area, which is really nice to see. Just scroll that over there. There we go. And this is what you'll be doing the whole time. I'm doing it because I'm just changing time frames just to show the examples better rather than have them small and having to zoom in and out. What you would have, you would have this on multiple screens. So you'd be, you'd be constantly moving up and down the time frames, looking for what's going on. Let's just scroll that down a bit. You'd be constantly searching out to see what is happening in terms of your slower time frames to, to gauge what is likely to happen next. The anticipation, apologies, there we go. Oops, sorry about that. I've gone all the way across. Pull that back over again. There we are. So you will be up and down the time frames looking for those opportunities. And to answer the question that we all want to know as, as a trader, as an intraday trader or a longer term trader, makes no difference. You want to know what is likely to happen next. And that is what the VPOC does for you. It answers that question. And it answers that question when you're approaching a high volume node or a low volume node, whether you're breaking away from the volume point of control or whether you're approaching the volume point of control. It gives you all that information because it is the combination of volume, price and time which presents this data 
on the y-axis. So I hope you've enjoyed that particular video. Just another example of the VPOC in action in real time. So thanks for watching. See you again soon and bye for now.